Howdy Banjo Ben here again. Welcome to my website BanjoBenClark.com. Maybe you're watching this also on my YouTube channel. Um, I would like to welcome you. In today's lesson we are going to talk about some basic banjo theory. Okay, it's not that it's just banjo theory because this theory really applies across the board to all instruments, but today we're going to use our banjo to help illustrate that. So for those of you who are just learning how to play banjo, or maybe you've been playing banjo for a while, but you need a dose of theory, today is your day. We're going to talk about a major scale, what it's uh, made of, and then we're going to move directly from that into starting to learn how to play our chords and play backup which is very, very important, which then translates also into our lead playing. So let's talk about some very basic things about this instrument, the banjo, and some things that are going on on the neck. I grew up playing piano, and so therefore, whenever I look at my stringed instruments fretboards, I tend to look at them kind of like a piano keyboard. Some of you may not have that view if you've never played piano. That's why I really encourage piano, people to take piano lessons. It's the mother of all instruments. But I would like to shed some light on how I view this fretboard and show the relationship between a banjo, a guitar, or a mandolin's fretboard compared to a piano keyboard. Most of you are familiar with how a piano keyboard looks like, right? We've got those white keys, then we've got the black keys that are sprinkled in. Each one of those keys, as if you were to play up a piano keyboard, not missing a single key, you would be playing a half step increment each time. A half step. It's important that you remember that term, half step. Now in the same way, if we were to start on our banjo on the very lowest string, this low D string, and we were to play the first fret, we would be also ascending, going up a half step. And then for every fret that we play, we continue to ascend a half step. That's the exact same increments that you would hear if you went to a piano and played every single note as you went up without skipping any of the white or black ones. So if those are half steps, if each one of our fret denotes a half step increment, what would a whole step be? That's the other thing that we need to become familiar with, a whole step. Well, if you know what a half step is, a whole step would obviously be two half steps added together. So if we started again on that low D string, and we wanted a whole step, which fret would we go to? Two. That's right. Because if we went to the first fret, there would be a half step. To get a whole step, we'd go to the second fret. If we wanted another whole step, we'd go to the fourth fret, then the sixth, then the eighth, and so on. Now, if we were to climb chromatically, which means climbing by half steps, up from our lowest note, and we were to do that 12 times, we would accomplish something. Do you know what that's called? It's called an octave. Okay, so if we start out on our low D string, and we climb up 12 half steps. At this point, we have now reached an octave above where we first started. See if you can hear the relationship between these two notes. Can you hear that? They are both D notes. Both D notes. However, they are separated by one octave. Now on a piano keyboard, we can have many octaves of notes because if you went all the way down to the left and you played the lowest D note you could get and then you counted up 12 individual half steps and landed at another D and did it again and again and again and again, we can get numerous octaves out of a piano. The same way on the banjo. We don't have quite the range on a banjo that we do with the piano, but I can still get numerous octaves. There's one octave. Now we're going to have to switch strings to get another octave, but if we start back at that same note here and do it again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There's another octave up there on the 15th fret of the B string. So listen to this. Three octaves of D. Could we keep going? There's that high D. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and we run out of frets, we can go up there and actually get that harmonic of that next highest D. So there we have three complete octaves of 
D. And that's very important to know when we start talking about our scales. I don't teach really in-depth scale theory because I think it's boring. And I don't think that when you're first starting off playing that you need to know all this terminology. However, there's only one scale that I would like for you to learn, and that is the major scale. So for those of you out there that think, I can't do theory, I can't understand and remember all this, I promise you that you can remember this much because I'm going to give you a formula that you can carry around with you in your back pocket and no matter where you start on the banjo fretboard, you can always play a major scale. All other scales are based off a major scale. So if we know our major scale and then we know how to just rig our major scale in different ways, we know all of our other scales. Okay, so instead of having to learn a huge block of scales, we learn one scale and then how to move the individual notes in between it to come up with our other scales. Let's talk about a regular major scale and the increments that are involved. Now I teach this to little bitty kids all the time, so I know that you can learn it. And it goes like this, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Can you say that with me? Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. That is the secret formula to a major scale. You never have to memorize another scale again. Just simply memorize whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Now, let's put that into practice. Let's go back to our low D string here on the banjo, open D. We're going to start there for our scale, so that means that if we apply this formula starting on a D note, we're going to play a D major scale. Simple enough, right? So we started there. How did our formula go? Whole, whole, half. So let's play a whole step first. That means up to the second fret. Another whole, and then a half. Takes us up to the fifth fret. Now what's the rest of the formula? Whole, 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 half. So let's do that. Whole, 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 half. And there we've ended back up at that octave. Now, you know that formula, so why can't you take that other places on the banjo fretboard? Well, of course you can. Now you can play any major scale there is. So if we want to play a G major scale, let's just start on a G note. Makes sense, right? Well, where do we have a G note? We have a G note right here. Here's one of them. Our open G string, our open third string. Let's apply the same formula. Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Easy, right? And now we're back up to that G. Now we've been starting on major, on open strings so far. What happens if we start on a fretted note? Well, that's, that's not too bad. Let's play a G scale this time, but start on a fretted G. Here was an open G string. Where can we find that same G note by fretting? Does anybody know? Well, if we start on this D string, there it is. On the fifth fret of the D string, it's the same note as the open G string. So this is a G note as well. Can we apply the formula from there? Sure we can. We're just gonna act like this. What's the open string? and apply the whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. Listen to that. Now listen verses when we start on the open string. It's the same exact notes. because we're starting on the same note and carrying out the same formula. Now, does it make sense for us to always play these scales and our licks on one string? Well, of course not. That's why we need to think about what our other strings are. Because at a point, as we're ascending up this scale, we are going to hit a note value that is equal to our next highest string. So let's start on the G scale again. We played up two whole steps. That's a B note. Well, guess what? We also have a B string. So we don't have to play all the way up to here. We can simply go whole, then our B string, which is a whole step up. Because if we would have continued on this string, we'd arrive at the same note, if your banjo's in tune. <laughs> then we can continue that formula by starting here. What are we at? We've already played two whole steps. 
So now we've got a half, which means we play up just one fret from that B string. And then we have another hole. Guess what? That's a D note. And we have another D note here on our open D string, right? So we can switch. We can either play that third fret or we can just switch to the open string. Let's switch to the open string. Now we have just three more notes left in our scale, a hole and a hole and a half. And now we've condensed this G major scale into three strings, yet following the exact same formula that we had before. Hole, hole, 